Welcome to the General's Gentlemen. Nonetheless, we are in Rise of Nations, uh, players for today. Thankfully, you haven't missed anything. It's Rise of Nations that are starting off their civilization. Sermon will be playing as our Dutch. And his opponent, the Red Man, the Red Egyptian, SeaTac. We are on the Great Lakes, and this is an interesting kind of biome. Normally, Great Lakes isn't snowy, but it's snowy for whatever reason. It is. Uh, changes it up a little bit, machine. And <laughs> Would you put a dock there, Blake? Bro, I don't think so. It's, it's not the ideal place to build a dock. No, what, what, what would be good is if oh, one, of our, no. one of our... Oh, no! Oh, so there's, there's one, one fish. Okay. I, I, I thought there was none. But I mean, even none. one yeah, isn't yeah. worth it, I no. would say. But does he know? I mean, he hasn't no, scouted he the edge of the Great Lakes, so... That's what he's oh, seen. that's really rough. See, it looks probably a lot bigger than what it is. Hmm. Uh, because you've got to think of the cost. It's... How much is it? I mean, it's... it's 150? 100, but it's probably 100. like 70 okay. at the start, or 80. Yeah. Plus then the, the... Yeah, I'm thinking like combined with the fishing Yeah, ship. 100. Yeah. I mean, it may pay off eventually, mm. but... Yeah, that, that could have just been another woodcutter's camp, which probably would have been better, but... <laughs> Look at this! This is so imba. One, two, three, four, five fish coming out of uh, Sherman's natural lake. And that's actually really OP. Such imbalance, please remake. See, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, dude, dude, watch it. Go to, go to CDAC's vision. I, I just want to see the look on his face. Is he real? Is, is that really it? Aww. Imba, Imba, please fix. You do remake. get, you do get the wealth. That that's really it. Hmm. But again, he doesn't actually have a, a market, so. Yeah, it's a lose lose, but of course he didn't know how big that was. He didn't know how many yeah, fish there was. The docks already gone. I think this is perhaps the main reasons why you don't see this map so often in one v one. It's generally it's the Sahara, the Old World, or mm. the Great Afri or the African Watering Hole, and sometimes Australian Outback. But yeah, you you rarely see this map, and I mean <laughs> this is perhaps one of the reasons why. Actually, mm. tilt your head, Blake. That looks like Australia, doesn't it? It does a little like, bit, yeah. Western Australia is a, bit. a bit of a tumor there on the side. Mm. But it, it's like, it's almost Australia there. And like this, this, this is Tasmania. That's mm. just continental drift is, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's a real bitch. Uh, <laughs> so Imba, Imba map. Uh, if uh, Seven wins, it's it's solely because of his, his Great Lakes spawn. Uh, nothing else. Uh, with that being said, yeah, it's just an instant sell off here from from Sea Tech. He kind of builds that fishing ship and goes, "See a dock. Uh, I'm going to build you someplace else." So at least he gets a little bit of a refund there. Short of that, uh, well, you can refund docks, can't you? Can I have... he sell it or did he destroy it? Well, I mean, there isn't there isn't a sell, but like sell if he hit delete, button. you probably oh, okay, right. he deleted it then. Yeah, yeah, but you probably get money for that. Yeah, I, don't know. I just don't know what it is. So. Yeah, I just didn't know what the term was for it. I don't know what you call it in... Well, I, I didn't uh, even know that so, you would get yeah. money back. I guess... Um, I guess he wouldn't have done it if he didn't get any money out of it. So I think it's a pretty safe assumption mm -hmm. that you do get somewhat of a refund or something back. But yeah, that that's a bit better. He has three. So yeah. that's a combined total of four over two docks <laughs> compared to this scumbag's five mm -hmm. fishes. I fish the dream. It's really hard to harass as well on Great Lakes, I suppose. You know, when it's just a African boarding hole, for example, it's, like, it's, it's much easier because uh, you have the ability to... Man, is that armed caravans? So I think other caravans. It's trying to. Level. It's not exactly yeah. the best thing in the world. So it's uh, it's much easier because you're only on, on one water source. It's easier to, to get docks up if you do decide to do this. So, uh, whereas on Great Lakes, it's like, do I want to walk across the entire map and try to build a dock and then try to build ships to attack your uh, fishermen while my dock can be sieged by your, your grand army? Not really. It's, it's not really a, a good strategy. Very quick Colossus coming out of SeaTac. And, uh, yeah, very, very late tech up there. So, interesting game so far. We actually don't see the Colossus all the time but it is a very good colossus i think yeah. it's just it's just expensive especially the 200 wealth but it will definitely pay off pulling his villages out to try and slap about this armed merchant can he actually surround it no 
I don't know if this was like StarCraft, where if you, or... if, you get, if you get enough villages surrounding yeah. the caravan, he can't actually kite. Uh. But it's going to be delaying some mining time. Pretty effective stuff so far from the Dutch. The income is uh, so far looking pretty good for the Dutch. He's got 100 f oh, timber, 112 food, 100 wealth because of all those fish. <laughs> And this, this, these villages are actually not yeah. mining at the moment. Yeah, but villager speed's going to pop any second now, and then the uh, the arm merchant's in some serious trouble. So. <laughs> Do we have any military units being built? No, nothing yet. So all he has is just these, these villages, but I suppose when you go for that quick colossus, that's kind of the punishment. But even then, it isn't actually doing that much damage. Probably just peel them off one at a time and, and put them in the, the city yeah, to heal. Smart. Good play. Does have this third city, however. That will be the cost. So I'm deciding not to go down the wonder route just yet. But as I say that, what's he building at the top right? That's a uh, top right corner of it. What's, what's that? Oh, the Hanging Gardens. Is. It is the Hanging Gardens. Right, cool. Just wanted to double check. It certainly looked like the Hanging Gardens, but I'm not that familiar with the icons. So, yeah. <laughs> You mean you don't have every single wonder in Rise of Nations memorized? Uh, unfortunately not, uh, Machine. Oh. Hopefully, I will someday. That's my goal. Uh, I'm going to have them, each of them as my, my profile pick on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> just kind of like one a week until I, I get them all covered. But not at this stage, no. Uh, really nice citizen kiting uh, from SeaTac. Yeah, he doesn't even lose that one. That was very nicely played. Uh, I'm trying to think if I could get them all. Pyramids, Colossus, Hanging Gardens... Uh, Oh, hang on. Never mind that, because we have the Hoplites, finally. Not exactly the best unit to have versus the armed caravan, but the Colossus will be finishing. Not that much faster than the, the Hanging Gardens, I suppose. That it bought, bought micro-time, uh, delayed uh, some of the, the citizens who were working on them, so the Hanging Gardens uh, will be up soon. There is a lot of knowledge income as well, so how does how does Sermon go for this? What does he, what does he do with all his cash? Getting his tower out. He's uh, not actually getting all of his university saturated. Just has that one completely empty. And he can get some pretty powerful knowledge lead if he goes for all these merchants, or all the the scholars rather, on top mm. of that hanging gardens. It does give you 50 knowledge, so that's the equivalent of five scholars. I have always been a fan of uh, adding on the universities preemptively, uh, still just getting that base knowledge bonus and the, the, the small amount of income to start off with. Uh, so when you're ready to add the scholars on, you can do so. Big fan. All right, let's try this. See, see how well I go. I'll probably, I'll miss right, a few. Okay, but, right, okay. So pyramids, hanging gardens, colossus, the terracotta army, anchor Wat, uh, the Versailles. Uh, then you have this, the space thing, the supercomputer or superconductor, whatever it's called. Uh, then you have the Statue of Liberty. Then you have um, the Forbidden City. And then you have uh, the the Indian Taj Mahal. You done? I can <sighs> think of one that you've missed. Shit. I should, I should have written these down because then I would have yeah. been able to. Um. I mean, Red Fort's on there. Oh, Red Fort! There of course. Go. Gotcha. <laughs> what, is that it? <laughs> Ah! Uh, oh, Persilon Tower, I didn't get okay, that. Right. Temple of Tikal, didn't get that. Kremlin, didn't get... Oh, God. Oh, Alpha Tower, oh, Apple my Apple God. Tower, because I got, like, half of them. <laughs> Look, I mean, I think you uh, you deserve a small round of applause machine. You, you've done fairly well. Uh, you, you, you put a good, pretty good effort in. I think I said Anchor what? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Good job. Oh, I didn't get the Colosseum either. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I am... Yeah. Elta Rise of Nations. Sorry. Wonder, bro. Yeah. I'll get it next time, but... I'm sure you will. Yeah, it's been an economic game thus far. We haven't seen a lot of action. Uh, Triple City's now up and running for SeaTac with that Colossus up. Loving that bonus to his economy. Commerce cap was the word I was looking for. I found it. Another dock here as well. Uh, <laughs> SeaTac just, just trying to get the advantage. In fishing. It's only taking him three Great Lakes to, to get up to somewhere near the level of Sermon. With one dock. The city of West, of course, in the, the eastern position of this map. It angers me just just yeah. a little. Maybe maybe you don't get anything back for the dock. I'm just thinking maybe he destroyed it so it was cheaper to build oh, another one. So yeah, I only just thought yeah, of yeah. that, yeah. 
Because I also couldn't think of why he destroyed it. But yeah, maybe that's why. Because if he if he actually kept it alive, then uh, the the next stock would have obviously cost more. The the system of rise of nations. Clever. Mm. So he's actually in territory here. So will he go for his own dock? Even dock Sai getting two of them down because there is a lot of fishing ships here. Hmm. I don't think he scouted this though. Yeah, hasn't hasn't fully scouted this, but he, I think he gets an idea of how big this is. So he probably can can think about. Is, is it is actually worth going for the harassment there? I mean, there is a bark, so that that's on 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 guard duty. But it is the medieval age for uh, both of our players now. See, tapping a little bit behind, I think. Yeah, yeah oh, he's, no, uh, he's also too behind in military research here as well, machine. So see, tech already had it, but um, mm. yeah, only one level military. Is he pop capped? No, because it must be the colossus that's giving him yeah, extra. Yeah. Increase your population limit by 50. Okay. Just a flat amount. Rather than a percentage, obviously isn't as good. I have, a, I have an intense Rise of Nations question for you, Machine. Sure. Okay, hopefully right. Hopefully it's so... just not... Hopefully I, I do better than what I did in my, my okay, wonder right. question. Okay, so with the, the transport barges, if you transport a scout on a transport barge, does it have more vision range than a transport barge Ooh. of another unit? That's my question. I want to know. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I have no idea. Hmm. I would have to test it. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, well, I am, I am interested. I would like to find out at some point. That being said, we actually have three lakes being harvested, or however you want to refer to it as, being fished by SeaTac. He's got this one, which is one. He's got four in total, and then he's got eight in total. So it's 8v5 in terms of the fishing. So he's he's, he's made up for it. And the Terracotta army is being built. So this is a very wonder-heavy game. You generally see the players neglect their wonders. At least the you know the high-tier players mm -hmm. do that. And Sermon, I'm, I'm pretty sure, is is a pretty high player. But yeah, at least we are seeing the, the wonders. I hope we can see more wonders because we generally only see a few of the early ones. I think that that was the reason why I missed so many of the wonders. Because like, I'm only thinking of the ones that, that I, I, I use and the ones that we see yeah. in games. Though I do, I do like the red forts. So I don't know why I missed that one. It's like, yeah, the only wonders that you ever build, right, are the Terracotta Army and Red Fort. Well, no, the only wonder I ever build is the Terracotta Army, okay. but yeah, in, in reality, yeah, the only wonders I ever build are the Terracotta Army and the Red Fort. <laughs> they are by far the coolest and the best wonders, so yeah, that, that is right. I have bought it, built a couple of Red Forts in my day. I, I think it just kind of fills this power fantasy, is like, yeah, I have this impenetrable defense, you can't yeah. siege it, and then even if your opponent has quite a few siege units, it takes them minutes yeah. <laughs> to go through the red fort. It's just, it's just so strong. But yeah, we even see the granary upgrades. I mean, this is, makes a lot of sense, yeah. of course, hanging because gardens. he yeah, yeah has the hanging gardens. They're very cheap, so a very good economic wonder, as we can see. Actually, quite ahead is the blue player is Sermon, despite of course the wealth as you would expect given the the statue Colosseum Colossus. Those economic upgrades certainly play dividends, uh, machine, the, the later and later the game goes, and obviously the, the more citizens that you have uh, mining they are most certainly worth, and with the, the hanging gardens make it even more so. Uh, but yeah, the, the cheaper investment to try and get those upgrades is, is pretty fantastic. So this is the, the fourth city now for, for Sermon. I hope he has taxation because that is a hell of a lot of territory he's secured. 38% of the map already. It's, it's nice having uh, the, the two cities here, having this city in the south and then having this city in the north because it actually opens up the attack paths because this is a really defensible location. He has the river, which slows movement speed. So if you have some arches and some towers, yeah. it's going to be really hard to attack through that. But even here, again, this is very defensible because of the the, the choke point there between the, the, the mountain and the... The woods and especially with those the keep and with the woodcutters camp so again a very defensible city will he actually go around and, and go for for this city here too probably a little bit too far out of the way but i think overall it's looking pretty good for sermon uh that being said though with that much wealth he could definitely use the market to buy a lot of resources but there's floating up a fair bit of it and he will have a lot of reinforcements from this Terracotta army. Certainly will of that machine. So, yeah, Terracotta army is going to be really nice with that added on. Of course, just the, the longer it's up, uh, the more use you get out of it, uh, the more cost-efficient the, the wonder actually becomes. It's nice to have 
that kind of unit production. Uh, obviously, it's not only the fact that you're getting free units, it's just a, the additional unit production in and of itself. It means less production facilities that you need, uh, and it makes it a lot easier to to build up a standing army so you get attacked, your army's defeated. You see these getting seized, you've got a terracotta army there, and that hasn't been taken down. You've got the terracotta army in addition to your other military production structures, uh, kind of cobbling together some form of defense before your, your city uh, is assimilated. I hope we see another wonder. What should he go for? A lot of timber. That's that's a nice one. The the Temple of Tikal. If you're on a map where you don't have a lot of timber, then that can be an absolute mm. godsend. Increases your timber gather rate by fifty percent. That that's nuts. It is expensive though. And then um, the anchor what's kind of the same as the metal. It actually is the same. Cost of barracks. Wow. Cost of barracks stable units reduced by twenty five percent. That would certainly pay off in the long run. Yeah. A lot of these wonders are actually long term. But I feel like in most games of Rise of Nations is that if you are investing in something so expensive for this long term benefit, mm -hmm. you, your opponent will just punish you. Especially because you know whenever you build a wonder, it is revealed. So it's like, hey, I just spent 500 wood and 500 <laughs> knowledge, uh, 500 wealth. Mm -hmm. Come kill me. Like, okay. Okay. Right. What level of taxation do we see? I really want to know for, for Sermon because his, his wealth income must be just, just nuts if he has a high level of taxation. I'm trying to find a Templar. There's he's actually on, a button he's for He's on 53%. We haven't seen this kind of map territory in a 1v1 in a long time. Certainly what's making this stand out for me. I honestly <laughs> cannot find a Temple. Uh, is that one? Right next to the city? That's a library. Here, here, that one. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, so he has level two. Level two taxation. Okay. And then existentialism. Yeah, you pronounced that right. Oh, that, that's not the tax. This one that is a taxation, the social contract. But yeah, this is a lot of map control. You are certainly right. And I can't remember what the win percentage is. I think it's, it's 70% uh, of where you actually... There's a countdown that comes down. But it, it's actually a little bit... Intimidating is when, you know, when you have these giant lines extending all the way around your base, it creates quite the salient. Just needs to get another city up here and, and it would certainly push things up. But other than that, I mean, the army is pretty non-existent for both of our players, really. Even the Red Army is a little bit small, still has the Slingers, and slingers. a lot of income, though. He's not really spending this one. Hopefully he goes all the way up to Enlightenment Age and still has the Slingers there. That would be the dream. They're very enlightened Slingers, okay? <laughs> they're, they're Slingers that are too busy thinking about philosophy and, and the role of government to... To throw rocks. Yeah, yeah. you know, to, to, to do any more advanced combat. But mm. it will be the Musketeers and some Heavy Knights here, so definitely the better tech. But I'm sure we'll see these upgrade at any moment. And the Enlightenment Age... Um, so actually, they're not, they're not they're not enlightened slingers yet, but they will be shortly. Don't you worry. Yeah, look, I certainly appreciate your uh, your analysis there, machine. You're right. I mean, think of how, how complicated it is to use a gun, like you know, to clean it and like reload it and all this other kind of stuff. But with with slingers, they're just gonna rock. They just throw it at people. And it leaves your mind free to uh to ponder <laughs> to, life's mysteries. To, yeah, ponder life mysteries. Exactly, machine. Perfectly put. So yeah. That being said, though, we definitely need to see better macro from SeaTac because he has a lot of income, a lot of knowledge, a lot of, of everything banked up, really. And uh, he's just not spending his resources. And this could end badly, given the, the lack of map control that he has and the armies are approaching his gates. The city is a little bit exposed here. I mean, this city is actually getting sieged by the bomb vessels. Yeah, this is the, uh, the classic... Uh... I built my city close to uh, a, a my enemy's controlled water conundrum where you, you end up with these bomb vessels uh, demolishing uh, any buildings that are within range and it can be pretty crazy. This is actually his capital. That's That should be within range of the bomb vessels yeah. as well. So, yeah, this could be a little bit antsy. The only resource that there isn't a lot of is timber and timber is what he needs to build ships. Mm -hmm. So he's actually in a bit of trouble, but you can just use your siege units to destroy the bomb vessels. The cannons and such are pretty decent versus bomb vessels. It's the most effective way. Still has only the slingers, and there we go, musketeers. 
So a pretty big upgrade, perhaps the biggest we've seen, got from Slingers all the way up to Musketeers. That normally doesn't happen, but we have a bit of a flanking maneuver from the army of Sermon. Catapults! Love it. Sermon looking pretty good in terms of his upgrades, though uh, that siege factory needs to get some work done. And the industrial age being teched up. So this, this is getting worse and worse for the red player. At least the macro is pretty good here for Sermon. He hasn't really got much of an army, but he is spending his resources. He is teching up. He is getting better economy. Whereas his sea tack is just he's just floating up too much food. He's not really mm. uh, getting the upgrades. He's not really getting the units. Even his library research, even apart from uh, he's just his age, is, is actually quite behind. And yeah, there's going to be some of the important infrastructure being sieged down. Citizens should be sniped here as well. Machine not going to be in range of that Ooh. tower that are covering them, but a counter attack here. It's a counter attack, yeah, but it's a counter attack without supply. He actually has a president, which doesn't give him the supply. It certainly does not, machine. Uh, he's taking a bit of damage here from the attrition. His cannons don't have that extra rate of fire. But it is the industrial age. Still, that army is actually not too bad because of the terracotta army. But sooner or later, it will go down. And yeah, this is like, going to end up falling, machine. It's actually a major city as well. So it'll take a long time to take that one down. Meanwhile, your capital is under attack. So. Yeah, that's the problem. It's, like, it's the capital over here, where the capital is... Uh, is west, which is actually it, pretty weak there. It is in a major city, so he's trying to get that one up as ASAP. Oh, there we go, supply wagon. Finally, it turns up. There is a lot of cannons, though. Yeah, so they're going to be covering the cannons, but all those musketeers at the front there are not going to be covered. So, nice to see that. There's the, the reduction, though. Geezer's down. Almost. Almost. I got juked out because all of the everything pulled back. But yeah, that's there it. We go. City lost. Two minutes 30 on the countdown clock. Is he going to pull his army back? He doesn't really have much of a choice. Certainly is the only option that I can think of, Machine. Sort of that terracotta army producing uh, units a hell of a lot faster than it currently is doing. I don't think there's time to pull the army back. Um, pro it'll force probably take him about should, a minute or yeah. a minute and a half. And yeah, he can use Force March once, but you're right, he's running out of time. And I don't know what he's trying to do here, because this is the capital. And even if he gets the capital, it will take him longer to get the capital win. And, yeah, you know, going for the rest of the cities, these are the upgraded riflemen, we should have tanks coming out um, pretty soon, I suppose. No, he actually lost his, his war factory, so not upgrading and doesn't even have the, the oil anyway. One minute and 43 seconds here, machine. They're not actually on the city, though. I'm not sure if they, they're covering it. It could be really sneaky if the terracotta army just turfs out a single squad that uh, buys another 2 minutes 30 here. That is true. He needs to possibly. He needs to leave something near the city just so he doesn't get sneaky capped. Even even this barracks can maybe just run up and and get the uh, the retake and to reset that timer. Yeah, the city's going to get taken down. And congratulations, but it's not the capital. It doesn't actually matter. How are these guys communicating like tele really bad telegraph or something? How do they not know that the uh Light tanks are here. How do they not know that the, the, the capital is has been taken? Send me a raven. Yeah. Uh, this this can be retaken. I really wanna see I really wanna see C Tech just sneak a unit in and retake the capital. Maybe he's gonna wait, like swaggily wait until the last ten seconds and then send something in. That, that probably buys the most time, doesn't it? If you if you sneaky cap. Yeah. It's not going to be from the Terracotta Army, which is currently being sieged here. And the Terracotta Army will actually get taken away. Mm. Oh, the Forbidden City. Doesn't this uh, reset the it timer? Will. Yes, it will, Machine. But will okay. it get done in time? I see where this is going. Right. Yeah, that's a good question, yeah, Blake, because I... it's 40% done, but it's only 40 seconds uh, left. I don't think they can get it done in time. It needs to pull more citizens here. And certainly the plan, Machine, is a good plan from SeaTac. I wonder what he was doing. It's been explained to me. I get it now. It's about 75% done. He's got 25 seconds left to get the last 25% completed. It's almost maxed out in terms of citizens here. They've got 12 of them on, 30, 40, 15 of them on. Well, percentage is on 70%, 71%, uh, 15 it's gonna seconds. going to be a close one. I don't think he's going to do it in time, Machine. The city's being captured, so that's going to be the Terracotta Army taken over. I think, no, I don't think he's going to do it in time, Machine. Nah. Five, four, three, two, one. GG. GG. I mean, it was it was cool, but it wouldn't yeah. have mattered. Again, like he lost he lost the Terracotta army. 
He lost this. I mean, maybe he would have hoped for his own uh, his own capital win. Let's go examine map because this army was actually pretty big. So yeah, I guess he would have just gone for the capital. Um, yeah, that was a close one. And what we could have seen Sermon do, just to be extra sure, is if he built the Forbidden City, just to just to prevent it from being taken. But yeah, that was a nice try by SeaTac. Obviously, having the idea a little bit too late. And you didn't pull enough workers. I mean, you could have pulled these workers as well. And that's it. Yeah. Weird, yeah. weird game. Weird game. I wish that I wish it had completed, dude. Yeah. I want to see how that game would have gone had the uh, the Forbidden City completed. But, oh, well. I enjoyed that. Pretty sure you don't actually reveal the Forbidden City, though. So, like, he wouldn't know yeah, where it is. I'm pretty sure that's one of the, the perks of it. So he would, he would see the capital timer go down. Mm. Uh, and then he would have to search around, you know, search over here... I guess actually would have been obvious because it really it would have only been here mm. or here, and he ha he would have had vision here, so it still would have been very close either way. Yeah, nice try there, Ctac. Get that uh, get that Forbidden City out quicker next time, and and you'd have a chance. So yeah, that'll wrap us up for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this Rise of Nations cast. It was a slow start, but a exciting end. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Cheers.